Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. Are we headed back to a gold back dollar pre-1970? You'll be surprised at who says so. And are we going to see the update in the SEC versus Ripple case? Oh, yes, we are. And does the SEC embarrass very easily? No, they don't. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, it is, and I will tell you the, the market cap in a moment, one day until XRP Las Vegas. Obviously, we're not counting the day that the event starts on Friday, right, because tomorrow's Thursday. But tickets will be available up until the start of the event. So make sure that you come get your ticket Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. It is on. We are here, and we are super excited. We start our round of meetings and walkthroughs again to finalize just the last few details before everything kicks off, and we couldn't be more excited to bring this to all of you. Make sure you get your ticket and join us, and make sure you come up and introduce yourself to me because I don't know what you look like. So I know you guys know what we all look like, influencers and stuff like that, but, you know, make sure you come up and introduce yourself to me. I love meeting all of you. There's no question about it let's get into the content right ladies and gentlemen and boy have we got a show for you today points to ponder points to ponder 2.36 trillion dollar market cap for crypto the market is off 2.6 percent at the moment and my setup in my room is not really jiving but we're going to make it happen bitcoin 61,200 plus 3,000 plus for ethereum 111 billion dollar plus market cap for usd tether and boy is that going to be on the top uh topic list today 49 cents for xrp we're off 0.7 on the on the 24 and off 6.5 on the seven day you're going to like what the technical analysts are saying they are saying watch out ladies and gentlemen that what we've seen with this last draw down may be in fact the last drawdown so keep your eyes on alert ladies and gentlemen 50 cents ranging between 49 and 51 we'll take it right now we know the case is still hanging over our head too oh my gracious i want to remind everybody about what was announced yesterday ripple joins forces with hash key dx and uh to introduce xrp ledger powered enterprise solutions in japan now we all have understood, and I've even seen people remind everybody that Hashkey has ties to Wan Zhang, which is not good because we know what that is, uh, uh, leads all leads to. But when I see this, I don't think anything bad, and I'll tell you why. And it isn't because Ripple has joined forces with Hashkey. It's because they're integrating the XRP Ledger powered te technology and solutions, which at some point means XRP, the bridge currency, the bridge asset. And that's important. Because for bad actors to use a world decentralized exchange like the XRP Ledger, they need access to it too. But the good news is, is with the way the design is, the XRP bridge asset sits in between the bad actors and the good ones. So you don't have to hold somebody else's dollars. That's what's so important about this. So keep that in mind when you see some of these things and you're like, wait a minute, that company has some pretty shady ties in the back of it. So does Ethereum. But we're going to see a USD stablecoin launched on that by Ripple too, right? But the reality is, is that XRP is a bridge asset. So we're, I don't see us getting damaged here. What I see is the integration of a bridge asset that can bring all of the people around and all of the countries around the world, the adversaries and the allies. So just keep that in mind as we move through this material, especially what we're about to see. Again, there's a reminder about the news, so make sure everybody knows it. We know that all the ETH ETFs that just launched in Hong Kong, hash key is the leading fund. That's what we know there. Shout out to Marty Party and Chad for that one. And uh, Marcus Ifanger reminds us about the supply chain solutions have long been proposed as enterprise use case for blockchain. And they are bringing that to reality alongside HashKey. Now, that's supply chain solutions, right? This is not the only thing that they're doing. Again, think about the bridge asset, the connecting countries that are allies and adversaries, and put a bridge asset between them, and there is no, I have to take your Chinese yuan. I don't have to. You can pay in Chinese yuan, but I want dollars, or I want gold. Maybe I want oil. Maybe I want something else, right? 
Maybe I just want to stay in XRP so I'm not in any other fiat currency, right? That's where ultimately I see this going. And it makes me think about the ever-expanding world and about how we are going to see with the onset of stablecoin legislation, the tokenization of real-world assets, ladies and gentlemen. And when we do, there is going to be a need to start to, to settle these things immediately and in ways and fashions that we have never been able to before. What if you wanted to do soybean futures and buy gold directly without U.S. dollars trading in between them? That's what a world decentralized exchange like the XRP ledger can do. And when I see all of the things that are happening, like preparing for custody, joining with HashKey and others to set up for supply chain solutions, what I see is everything for more than a decade starting to come to the surface. That's what I see. Wholesale CBDC test, this is important. I'm not a fan of CBDCs, but if you want this new digital world to work, you're going to need new digital vehicles like CBDCs and stable coins of commodities and fiat currencies to get this world moving on the new system we all know is waiting to be used. Light Shines in the Darkness says world, uh, wholesale CBDC test starting May 24th through November 24th, wave one in May, wave two in July, and this is the Bank of France, who we know Ripple has had major connections with for years. CBDC potentially used in oil transactions in the IMF of April 24. This is what we're talking about. This, I got to be honest, this, all of this news is why I'm here. And I'm telling you, I see the macro understanding that I've had about the use case of Ripple as a company and XRP and the XRP ledger as vehicles inside the financial world, I tell you, I see it all happening. I see all of this coming together. We need legislation. We need clear regulation, global coordination to enforce these things. And where we don't agree, we have XRP to respect those jurisdictions because everyone will agree to use XRP because no one entity controls it. I, I, I couldn't be more excited with what I'm seeing. I want you to listen very carefully what Jeremy Allaire says here. He reinforces the notion that I'm talking to you about today and that we've talked about a lot is the need to tokenize these vehicles because you don't get them you don't get the institutions here unless they have the ability and the legality the legal clarity to get that done take a listen to this internet financial systems to be used in the real economy not just for speculating on memes like we have to have we have to have um, you know digital currency fiat stable coins that are treated as real money that are cash equivalent there it is. so that if you're a financial institution you can take this and you can hold it as collateral. Yeah. If you're, and, and, and settlement, if you're a corporation, you know what this is. Your accounting firm, you're formerly from a large yeah. big four uh, yeah. you know, universe, right? So a, 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 an accounting firm can say, this is a cash equivalent instrument. I can treat it this way. I can report it this way. The, 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 the entirety of this, we, we have to have legally defined forms of, of uh, of stable coins, and that's what's happening around the world, by the way, which is great. Once you have these defined as like a new form of legal electronic money instrument, then actually this can take hold at scale for real economic activity. And so that's really key. We <laughs> have to have that. If we don't have that, we're not, this is not going to take hold as the basis of the internet financial system. And that's why we have to have stable coin legislation. Jeremy Allaire, Thank you so much, because it's absolutely true. And this is going to give everyone in the space the clarity and the confidence to let them know you can come build and invest in this space. You can come build on your own ideas and solutions you believe you have for future problems, right? Or even problems that exist now, but you can solve it with this technology. This is so exciting to me, and he's absolutely right as far as I'm concerned. This, I don't need to play you, but is Eric Van Miltenberg from Ripple explaining interoperability and about how there won't be one system to rule them all. And I'm only going to Starting show to play you this. I don't think it's how, how the world... Because this right here shows you exactly what we've been talking about in this discussion. You'll have all these different networks all around the world, and XRP can live in between it, and you're not forced to use it. You only use it when, when it's applicable to solve the problem for that particular payment transfer or transaction. 
right? So this is why no incentive is, in fact, I believe, the best incentive. Now, let's move to this. Take a look at this. Paulo Ordonio, this guy is the CEO of USD Tether. Two to three weeks to go back to pre-1970. What? We all know that he's referencing the gold standard for the U.S. dollar. Now let me run this down for you very quickly. I am finding it very hard to not look at these things and have a very big uh, question as whether all of these things could have connections. Let me just throw them out here. Stablecoin bill quite possibly could pass this summer or by the end of the year. Ripple is to launch a U.S. dollar stablecoin on Ethereum network and the XRP ledger. USD Tether has been targeted by the U.S. government. Senators are saying that there is illicit transactions supporting Russia's conflict. That ain't good. Years before that, it was all about the reserves and the lack of clarity and transparency. In the last year or so, we find out that USD Tether announces they've partnered with the Secret Service and the FBI. That sounds like they have been under some kind of capture or conservatorship, if you will. Inside the stablecoin bill, it's said that there is a provision, and I've read it and showed it on the channel, where the FDIC, the FDIC, can take conservatorship of any uh, entity that is operating illegally or out of compliance. Now, if USD Tether is partnered with the Secret Service and FBI, and by the way, they don't partner with people. They are government entities. That is a capture at my house. So to me, what happens now? We've often wondered, is it going to be collapsed? Is it going to be taken over? Will it be split up? And then the, the, the uh, market cap of Tether pushed in the circle and Ripple's new USD uh, stablecoin because it won't have anywhere else for the money to go? Or are we looking at a situation where USD Tether has been working with the Secret Service and the FBI, and when the stablecoin bill goes through, it will go under conservatorship of the FDIC? And might that be awarded either to Ripple as their stable coin to have government control over USD Tether, and now it's a US dollar faux show, and Ripple becomes the Fed 2.0. Could that happen? And then it would make sense for the government to realize just how systemically important all of this is, and Ripple becomes systemically important, and so does the XRP ledger. Yeah, I don't know if these things are going to happen. I'm just looking at this and going, my gosh, could this happen? or some similar shape, form, or fashion? Could we be watching USD Tether about to be brought underneath the umbrella of prudential regulation and then Ripple anointed to monitor all these transactions? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't happen at all. Maybe Ripple launches their own stablecoin. Maybe they rebrand USD Tether to USDR. Look, all I know is that this is all happening around the same moment of time and it feels like there could be an opportunity for some kind of cooperation to keep USD Tether alive but put it on the ledger and if you do obviously that's the majority of the digital asset transactions for the entire digital asset space instantly on the ledger where it can be properly monitored and also drive over a hundred billion dollars worth of liquidity onto the XRP ledger. Am I crazy? Some would say so, but I think it's right to ask the questions. I think what would make me crazy is if I pretended to know the answers, but I don't. But I won't pretend about this. I'm super excited to watch whatever the hell's about to unfold. Now let's take a look at this. Bank XRP says back to the gold standard. It certainly seems like some kind of commodity hint to back things, whether it's gold. And if we go back to that, what's going to happen to gold? The price of gold. Listen, this is what I tell you. I'm going to tell you right now, absolute plug, Miles Franklin, info at Miles Franklin, put dig gold in the subject box. Because if that happens, you're going to be glad you went and got some and put dig gold in there to get the best prices. 
Shout out to Jim. James Filan here sharing the most recent exchange. The SEC has filed its opposition to Ripple's motion to strike the new expert materials. Uh, and we see uh, a great and fine response here from Bill Morgan. The SEC argues the Fox Declaration is summary, not expert evidence, and Ripple does not dispute the summary of its financial records is correct. The SEC argues that Fox did not give an opinion that some institutional buyers suffered pecuniary harm because she stated what counsel told her to state and whether some institutional buyers suffered pecuniary harm because of others received higher discounts is a legal question. Regardless of the outcome of this motion, it is difficult to see the SEC's argument on the question of pecuniary harm is strong. I mean, imagine complaining you made profits from a contract with Ripple, but didn't make as much profits as someone else. Sure, that is what this case is about, protecting investors from a missed opportunity to make even higher profits while you fail to protect them from SBF and FTX. I just don't know if anybody's been able to succinctly drive that point home better than Bill this morning. So shout out to Bill Morgan for that one. Yowza, you just can't say it any better. At the time that he's chasing down the most transparent, compliant company and protocol in this digital asset space, Gary Gensler has allowed all of the things like Celsius, right? SBF, FTX, all of these things to take place on his watch. Now you tell me what in the world's going on. Sounds like he's protecting the banks more than he's protecting investors. Look, that's going to do it for me. Not financial advice for me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. Uh, no freedom zone today. And if there is, it will be content of what's going on here in Vegas. And boy, let me tell you, whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But I'm going to put it into private groups, too. So we're going to share that <laughs> as we can get it. But I promise you, I have a packed day with meetings. So don't hold your breath because it could happen that I don't get a chance to put content up today. But I will be doing that periodically over the uh, course of the two days of the conference. And we're super excited about that. I hope all of you take this opportunity, if you have the time, to go get you a ticket. This is about to be a remarkable, remarkable few days. And I want as many people here to be able to experience what appears to be a conference that's about to lay out a framework of everything that we see happening that we just went over in this video today. This is why I'm here. I don't fault anyone else for being here for any other reasons. And I don't care if you found your way here by riddles or mean tokens or you were a strategic investor and you've invested since you were a teenager. It doesn't matter. What matters is, is you're here and we're all here together. I'll catch all of you on the next one.